Provided by the Cohen Parole Law Firm. For almost 40 years, Gary Cohen has helped represent incarcerated individuals throughout Texas obtain parole and fight parole revocations. We protect those who have fallen short of perfection from the wrath of those who believe they have attained it. For more information about Gary Cohen and his associates, Alan Bennett and Gene Anthes, you can find it at the website, parolelaw.com. You may also contact them at 512-476-6201. Listeners should be aware that the following program contains language and audio images which may be found disturbing and may not be suitable for your snotty-nosed little brat who probably cusses like a sailor behind your back anyway. Parental discretion is advised. It's time to holler down the pipe chase and rattle them bars because we're going to do a prison show for you right here at beautiful old historic old exciting new KPFT Houston from the heart of Montrose where we all hope tomorrow will be a better day. And welcome to the prison show. It is Friday night, June the 21st. We're having a rough night here. No Facebook Live tonight. We tried. We tried. But, or David tried. <laughs> David's the, the guru when it comes to hooking up things to the Wi-Fi. But couldn't get it done tonight. So no Facebook Live However, we do have some really good news to share. Carrie Cook, I'm sure a lot of y'all remember him. He was, let me bring this up, Carrie Max Cook, uh, his conviction was thrown out a number of years ago. And on Wednesday, this past Wednesday, the CCA exonerated him. So he is now met the criteria criteria for being on the exoneration list, making him the 198th person exonerated after being sentenced to death. So we congratulate him, of course. And let's see, Virginia exonerated uh, Marvin Grimm Jr., in a 1975 murder case after 45 years of being in prison. So there's some good things happening. And uh, everyone appreciates those good things, right? I know you do. And of course, keeping in that spirit, the uh, Texas DA dismissed felony charges against a former CO. So we got to love those. Now, tonight, let me get my stuff situated. Tonight, David has lined up a great show for us. And let me bring it up. We have Dr. Amit Dominic 
president and founder at Texas Prisons Community Advocates, along with Brittany. She's going to be on here, too. And in case you missed it, uh, the best of Austin, uh, Dr. Amit was given the... Um, Let's see, has been in exist the Texas Prisons Community Advocates has been in existence for only three years, but is already one of the most effective messengers for incarcerated people in the state. And Dr. Amit has done that along with her staff. So we appreciate you. They're going to be on here tonight. Nicole Hutchinson Moore, the founder and CEO of the Rusty Diamond Network. She's going to be on the line. Marcy Marie, social media influencer and community outreach coordinator for Lioness Justice Impacted Women's Alliance. And A. Bonowitz, the co-director founder at Death Penalty Action. He's also going to be online tonight. So we're looking forward to a great show, even though it started out rough. And anyone who's trying to locate us on Facebook, we apologize. We tried and failed. Failed miserably. (laughs) Anyway, so Dr. Amit and uh, Brittany, I think... Hey, David, can you, I think they're on together, right? Hey, Brittany, you there? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. And Dr. Amit, are you there? I am absolutely here, Danny. Awesome, awesome. How are y'all doing this evening? I'm good. We're hanging on in there. (laughs) We've got a lot going on, uh, which we always have a lot going on during the summer, right? Absolutely. You know, during the summertime, um, we bring our mock cell around the state of Texas because we want the members of the public to really get the experience. We want them to know what it feels like to be in that hot prison cell. Um, and so we have our, our mock cell, which just, you know, it heats up in the, in the sun naturally, actually. And so we've got a couple of events going on, and it's, it's the busy season for us for that. Um, we're, we're actually going to be over at the Multi-Faith Initiative Conference on Monday. So Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll be out in the DFW area with the mock show and we're really really looking forward to that you know we're really glad to see more of the faith community getting involved uh, with what is happening behind those walls so we've got that happening so if you've got friends and families out here folks tell them to head on over to that conference um i'll be leading a workshop just a workshop just to get folks to get more more active in what's happening because what it's really going to take is really going to take the folks on the outside to join with those who are in the inside towards what I've always said for ever since I've started this process, what's done in the dark needs to be brought out into the light. So absolutely excited for that. Yeah. Uh, Shavis Watson, he's going to come down and help me load up that van for a change. And, and the folks in the inside can't see all that equipment in that van, but y'all on the inside, outside, I've taken some pictures and showed you, and that's, that's a whole lot of loading. We, we load up that full, full, um, cargo van and put that cell together on site and it's just those volunteers. And sometimes it's just been one of the times it was just two ladies, you know, putting that together. And the other times we've had some great students to help us. And then we're really also super excited about an event that we'll be having at the Greenhouse Church. And that's going to be a two-day event where we'll have the mock cell again there. And we may have some, I'm, I'm going to keep it a little quiet right now, but we, the pastor um, at that church is really on board. And he may be doing some interesting things for that event. So we're going to see how that goes. But that event is being done on Nelson and Mandela Day on purpose, right? And that event is a day of mourning. We are standing in solidarity with those who are incarcerated, their families and friends, and especially those who we've lost along the way. So that's why we're 
we're, we're calling it a day of mourning. We really need the public to understand how many people have uh, passed away, especially due to these heat conditions. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit during our conversation with the, the pastor today, uh, Brittany had been working on some numbers for those who have passed away in between, um, and Brittany, you can correct me if I'm wrong on these numbers, okay? Uh, between 2022 to 2023, we have, oh, we lost over 2,000 people. And it, it just. 2,000 you know, people in, incarcerated? Incarcerated. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's the numbers we're, we're looking at. Um, and we're going to include 2021 on there and working on a memorial wall. Um, for that, but it, that pastor was just, he was shook by it, you know, finding out that that's actually how many people are, are passing away and they're not being acknowledged and there's no memorial and there's no reverence oftentimes. So, and we've got hurting family members out here as well. So we'll be having that event on the 18th and 19th in the Houston area, Greenhouse Church. So we're, we're busy planning that as well. And of course, you know, we're in the middle of a, of the a, uh, AC lawsuit. Um, and I want to emphasize once again to our folks inside, when you, those 80, 1064 rules are being violated, we need you to file those grievances and you go right ahead and you send us those grievances. I'm going to make sure we, we give you an address, but we're also asking that you send those grievances to one of our attorneys on board. Erica Grossman has asked that those grievances are sent there as well. And that address is 1437 North High Street. Um, and that is Denver, Colorado. 80218. Once again, Erica Grossman at 1437 North High Street, that's H I G H Street, Denver, Colorado, 80218. And of course, you can always send them to us as well at P.O. Box 1974, Fulton, Texas, 78358. Um, so I want to definitely mention that. And then Really quickly, a little bit about the Sunset Commission. People still have time to submit their comments to the Sunset Commission. That report has not been uh, filed yet. So prior to the report being filed, that what you submit is confidential. After the report is filed, it is no longer considered confidential. But uh, look, Lieutenant Governor actually um, finally put in his choices for the Senate side of things. So we have the Senate um, sponsors, political sponsors, and we also have the House sponsors. Now there's probably gonna be some changes there because of the voting, and I just wanna mention this too. To let your family members know if they're gonna vote, they need to find out if that candidate really wants to look into prison conditions or prison issues overall. They need to be cognizant of that. What is that political official stance? on prison conditions and prison reform and reducing the carceral footprint throughout Texas. So that's something that people need to keep in mind and continue to send those charges and continue to send them in with recommendations. Our interim charges were not picked up for the summer. Last summer, we had interim charges that were picked up in the House, at least this, this year. The Speaker and the um, Lieutenant Governor did not pick this up. Um, so we, we won't be doing that, but we will be having hearings are coming. So hearings will be coming probably around fallish or so for uh, dealing with the issues that are happening within TDCJ. And I want to yield the floor real quick to Brittany before I run out of time. Hey. Yeah, um, so basically one of the things that I wanted to communicate is issues with messages getting denied containing another incarcerated individual's name or number. Um, one of the things we're trying newly with that is just giving the incarcerated individual a letter or a number such as incarcerated individual A or incarcerated individual B. The same thing can be done for corrections officers. And this is just basically a way to track actions better through messages. If you need to send an e-message copy of a grievance, the grievance can contain another incarcerated individual's information based on the Texas government code, the offender handbook, and, you know, the access to the courts. Um, but if you're trying to e-message 
the text contents of that grievance, it'll be denied most likely. Um, and the difficulty with that is relaying the, you know, the essential information of those actions of the individuals. So kind of re renaming them essentially so that there is no security risk and um, also no fear of reprisal on them through e-message. And along with that, I'm going to add, file those, to, those step two grievances. Um, I was looking at some numbers. We, we routinely do information requests on, on things like grievances. And I was looking at the numbers, where, uh, the difference between the grievance one and grievance two. And those numbers dramatically drop. Um, and, and we know, we, we, we know, we know that, yeah, all the problems with that. But we need you to file those. And we especially need you to file those when we do things like we get attorneys on board who are willing to file lawsuits. They need to have that information. And so I'm sorry gonna... to interrupt you, but we've got to wrap it up. But I wanted to um, make sure I got the name of the attorney correct. That's Erica Grossman. Gross uh-huh. Okay, G-R-O-S-S-M-A-N, correct? Right. 1437 North High Street, Denver, Colorado, 80218. And then, of course, TPCA's address, P.O. Box 1974, Fulton, Texas, 78358. All right. And also, congratulations on uh, Thank you. Best of Awesome. That. Austin, that is great. Great. That was a surprise. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> you didn't? You didn't know? No, I didn't know. Well, I found out at the last board meeting. That's when they, they told me about it. Before then, I didn't know anything else about this. I, I don't pay attention to these things. I just keep going. That's how it works. So it, it, it's kind right. of cool. <laughs> right. Keep going. That's what we do. We all keep going. Well, we appreciate you both being uh, on tonight's show. And I know Thank a you. lot of people are going to be asking me for that address. So that's why I wanted to make sure I double checked it. And Danny, I'm tagging you on a post as we speak. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And thank you both. And uh, we look forward to having you both on the show next time. Yeah, thank y'all have you. a good night. Thanks so much. Have a good Bye. one. Bye bye. All right. Always great information. Always great information. Now, uh, we have Nicole Hutchinson Moore, the founder and CEO of the Rusty Diamond Network. She is coming online now. <laughs> Hi, Nicole. <laughs> can you hear me? I can. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys doing, fam? Well, we're having technical difficulties, but we are, of course, what we don't we, right? But um, tonight we're having difficulty getting on Facebook Live, but David's trying. He's working. That's on. all right. And, and David's got it. David's, David's the man. As a matter of fact, that's what I, I, a little bit of what I wanted to talk about tonight a little differently. And first, I've got to say to the gals that were just on, that just so fuels me and, and fires me up and kind of ties into what I want to talk about tonight is that like to see younger, fresh, new people getting in and digging their heels and already having these accolades a couple of years in and, mm -hmm. and really understanding this, like that is so huge. And, and I just want to acknowledge those gals and, and what they're doing. It, it's kind of funny because it, it takes me back, you know, seven years when I was in and, and I just kind of felt like tonight I haven't been on in a while. Um, normally I'm on about every six weeks and I've been on for a couple of years. And actually, I think since probably COVID uh, time frame about 2020 is when I first met David and uh, you guys and um, kind of gone through all this with y'all. And I just felt like tonight I need to kind of step back a little bit about Rusty Diamond Network and after incarceration you know, I'm I'm five years out from being behind those walls, guys. And my story um, is an interesting one because, you know, I, I did a thing, right? I was involved in a really horrific, fatal drunk driving accident. And it brought me to my knees. And I had a choice to make. Either I was going to die or I was going to move forward and do something with it. And 
I, I hope that everybody understands when we all kind of look at this and we see, you know, the punishment and what we're living in and all these things, as we kind of step back and look at the fact that 95% of us at plus are going to get out, right? We're going to come back to our families. We're going to come back to our neighborhood. And Rusty Diamond Network was born in Dallas County when I was waiting to pull chain. And I had never been in that environment before. And I'm sitting around with these women and I'm telling my husband, send more money, send more money. I've got to buy cupcakes. <laughs> and I was getting these ho-ho cupcakes for all the girls and getting them around in a circle. And we were reading the Bible and just talking and sharing. And I realized it didn't matter. We're all sitting in that same uniform. And it didn't matter our history, our culture, all those things. What mattered about that is that we're all sitting there kind of in our brokenness. And we're going to help each other out of it. And I want to say, you know, five years out of those walls, now talking to students in colleges and going around the country and doing what I do and, and sharing this, there's so much hope. And I just feel like there needs to feel some hope. I, I sat in there without the air conditioning. And when I first got out, that was like my first thing. I'm going to fight, fight, fight. I'm going to fight for the air conditioning. I'm going to fight for the rights. And I was so shocked that I had been strip searched over 2,000 times in 450 days. I mean, wow. do math on that. Strip searched to the ground, you know, cough, do all this. Our dignity, our, our life beyond our family and our children. And I just kind of felt like tonight, you know, I needed to come on and just let you guys know there is so much hope and you are going to get out. And, and listen, we were just hearing the stories even about death row. And y'all know my friend Bobby, who was on death row and helped change that, that law. Uh, we just have to know that what we're doing inside those walls, even though we're kind of the, the bird in the cage, I was just feeding my bird feeders about 20 minutes ago. It will happen, and it will happen for you, and there is hope for that. What's important is when you're in those walls and you're in that environment is what do we do with that time and know that people like the, the ladies that were on before me and, and so many countless others, and I'm on boards and do all that stuff, they're fighting for you, but you got to do you, and, and you got to sit back and go, okay, I, this has happened, or I did a thing, whatever your situation is, and go, now what? And, and I hope that everybody feels empowered and, and looks at their brother, their sister next to them and says, okay, how do we rise up from this in a, in a positive way? And I can tell you now seven years from when I started Rusty Diamond and five years out, it, it, there's such beauty in it all. And there's so much camaraderie and it, it has changed so much in how we support each other. But that starts with, you know, how we're all kind of treating this, right, and each other. And so I just kind of wanted to get back to the original thought of Rusty Diamond. And um, I get asked a lot of times, how did Rusty Diamond's name, that was my mom's CB handle. For you guys that have been in for a while, and <laughs> you remember a CB, it was Rusty Diamond. And I thought, we're formed out of pressure, right? We're resilient. We're radiant. We're not perfect. But you know what? we've got that pressure and so we're able to kind of move forward and and use it for the good and i just hope that that message resonates with somebody and you know you guys write me and i appreciate it you know we work with women and and a few men on referral i do read your letters we do pray over them we've got amazing volunteers and you know i i hope you guys will reach out and reach to each other and and let's just kind of make this thing a, a better place for all, everybody that's involved, not just the people that are fighting for you. You you guys have a stake in the game. Now, what you said, those numbers, I the times you were strip searched, that I I I never heard it in numerical form. That is that kind of blows the top off my head. That's yeah, and my husband filed an ombudsman when the temperature reached 119 degrees in Plain State. He he actually filed an ombudsman and said it is night because I, I actually happened to catch the lady when she came in and I saw the thermometer. I said, "Is uh, is that real?" She looks at me. She goes, "Yeah, bitch." 
Sorry, I didn't mean to cuss on your air. <laughs> Maybe you can believe that. <laughs> no, exactly but, what said to me. but you know what? They say that it never reaches over 100 degrees. Most of the um, the unit officials say it doesn't reach above 100 degrees, which, you know. I can tell you on my <laughs> life, on my parents' life, on everything, I saw, I lived, I felt in the swamp pans even it was way over 117. It was 118 to my husband. And we got a response back, and they basically just said they couldn't say anything to him, but they were going to investigate. The next thing I know, they brought in five fans, and three weeks later, I was shuffled off to the DWI program at Lockhart. So there so is they reported 140 out. degrees at Hutchins State Jail. And over at the bird I, unit in the pipe chase, they used to have a digital thermometer where the officers would walk into the pipe chase every time. And I was the AC guy. I used to see it 120, 130 all the time. I mean, it wasn't nothing to be way over 100. I actually believe that. I was at Hutchins Unit teaching a class about uh, nine, ten months ago, and we were held outside for a while, and I looked at everybody, and I said, y'all have not been incarcerated. I was the only one that had been formally incarcerated in this group, but I said, y'all just sit back because I can tell you there's something in there they don't want us to see. We walked in there, and it was so hot. And I'm sitting there thinking, uh, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now they, they were trying to get it under control in here to bring us in. <laughs> now, uh, you had mentioned um, giving your address. I want to make sure we get that. For people to write to you. Are you there? Oh, yeah, put her. She's not on. Well, Mark, oh. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. You were accidentally put on hold. I apologize. <laughs> Go ahead. Give give everyone your. Uh... Okay. Now y'all. Well, you dropped her off of there. I dropped her off of there. I should have dropped that one off. It didn't. It didn't go. Okay. Down. Y'all are on the air. <laughs> oh. And y'all dropped uh, Nicole. <laughs> Nicole, call back. I don't know what I'll say. I'm. I was doing something, and she was over there. Okay, so, um, and the phone's ringing, so hopefully that's Nicole, and, you know, she, um, okay, now she's coming back on the air. There you go, Nicole. All right, so, I, I just was teasing David, I'm like, okay, now I'm going to go prison on you. That's always my show when, <laughs> when somebody has questions. Hey, I can but, lace up, okay, too. <laughs> I know, right? Right. Here's my address. Are you guys ready? Get a pen. It's 7801 Alma, A-L-M-A, number 74, Plano, P-L-A-N-O, Texas, 75025. And please, you guys write me and, you know, know that we love you. We pray over it. And you know, I'm happy to help some of you guys that I can. We focus on the women. We've only got certain volunteers. But, man, we are there for all of you guys. And, and everybody's out here fighting and seeing people like that were before me and that are getting ready to come after me talk about what they're doing to help conditions and do all of that. I'm so happy about that. But I hope my message came through tonight about hope after incarceration. There is so much hope. You will be restored. You will be renewed. And life will return, and it's up to you how that happens. Thank you, Nicole. It was a you had a great segment tonight. We appreciate you calling. I love you guys. Y'all are my fam. I miss y'all. <laughs> <laughs> love you too. You have a great weekend. Uh, hugs to everybody in all the units. All my girls at Lockhart. Love you. Bye bye. All right, now I've got Marcy Marie on two lines. And, well, hey, Marcy. Marcy. Okay. I guess she's not on that line either. So we've had Wi-Fi incidents tonight, and the, our phone is, is on Wi-Fi. So um, anyway, so hopefully Marcy will go ahead and give us a call back. And what I was going to say, what um, Nicole um, where there's hope, you know, there's a lot of, uh, new programs that TDCJ is coming out with. And one program they posted today at the 
hilltop slash Patrick O'Daniel complex. It's the first heavy equipment operator class. And upon completion, the women will receive their heavy equipment operator certification level one with NCCER. So that is impressive. And they and they have photos of all the um, heavy equipment. I, I know nothing about these um, what the name of them are or anything. They look like a bulldozer or dirt dirt pusher. <laughs> but uh, they show um, the people on the... Uh, I've never even seen some of these. Hmm. Okay, well, you know, it, it's another opportunity to um, get some education. And like we said last week, they are offering... Anger management. I can't help but mention that again. Anger management on the tablet. You too can go run and check out the uh, tips and different tricks to get. And only because I'm speaking from experience. That's that's the only reason I, I I've mentioned it. Linda and I, like I said last week, uh, walk the tightrope sometimes, and. Believe it or not, sometimes we walk the tightrope because I didn't write down the address for guests. That's why I ask them to repeat it a lot, make sure I get them right. So hopefully Marcy will give us a call back. Uh, We were definitely looking forward to speaking with her. Uh, Or if uh, Abe is available to give us a call early. That I know he's got a lot of great information uh, coming out. Melissa Lucio um, had some action this past week. And uh, I'm sure everybody remembers uh, Melissa's case. And let's see. We have, uh, I know that we had some bad news this week also, but... Marcy on line one. Okay. Hey, Marcy. <laughs> Hi, how are y'all? We're doing good. Sorry about the, um, we're, we're having glitches over here. Yeah, no problem. I'm happy to uh, talk to you, you all. It's always such a pleasure uh, to be a part of your show and to hear all the good work that everybody's doing. And we know you're doing good work, too, and we appreciate you being uh, being on the air, letting everyone know what's in the works. Are you there? Uh, Have, Marcy, are you there? I guess. Marcy's having technical difficulties also. Yep. Well, this show is... <laughs> The show is one big technical difficulty this evening. <laughs> well, pudding. Pudding. <laughs> <laughs> What'd she call that guy, Pudding Pop? Put who? Oh, uh, no, we have a caller who calls her loved one Pudding Pop. No, it's Sugar Pom Pom. Oh, Sugar Pom Pom. There you go. Sugar, uh, sugar Pom Pom. Yeah, we lost Marcy. And actually, I was at the, um, I brought her to visit her sugar pom-pom, and of course I had to. (laughs) Hey, sugar pom-pom. Hey. (laughs) I think Marcy might be trying to call back. So tell us about the summit while we got a minute. Well, hope everyone is planning to attend the summit, which is next Saturday, next Saturday in Austin. Uh, Is that Marcy again? Tell your friends and family about the summit because you know what tdcj officials will be there we're not sure how they're going to have it set up because every year it's a little bit different but hopefully it's like last year where you can walk around and talk to each individual um department of course we're gonna we're gonna head up Head on over to Secures. I've got issues with the food service. And I'm not talking about food service just at one unit. I'm talking about across the board. There's issues 
with the food and we all know there is so if you have me on your Securus tablet shoot something over to me and let me know if you've got anything specific you want to um, address now we I tend to address um, big things like of course the food and uh, any type uh, anything with Securus we want to TDC's ad, uh, advertisement said that they were going to be making presentations this time. Oh, really? That's, I didn't see that well, They one. said that they'd be also there for a question and answer, and we could walk around, but at the same time it said they were going to be making some presentations. Oh, I'm sure they're um, trying to build up into the 2030 plan. Well, I wanted to invite everybody to come down and meet us, and uh, Dee Dee and I were talking about going out and the, getting our some T-shirts up. So I'll see what kind of sizes we have, and if somebody wants to buy a T-shirt, um, that way I don't have to pay for shipping, and you can pick it up for a twenty-dollar bill. Hey, that's an excellent. I can't see you, but that's an yep. excellent idea. <laughs> <laughs> He's over the monitor, yeah. and, and I'm short. <laughs> so. Yeah, but it's also the way the camera's pointing at you. At least we got you on there, right? You got to sit there. Uh, yes, Facebook Live is now up and running, thanks to. David. Thanks to Howard. Howard remembered that they changed the password and oh. all those molecules and then germ proof passwords weren't working and I couldn't figure it out. And then he said, try this one and it worked. Well, thank you. Thank you, Howard. And I upset Marlo and Marlo, please forgive me. I was just trying to figure out what the heck to do. And Well, Marlo knows that we love her. And she thought I was blaming her and I wouldn't. I was really just trying to find answers. Well, so, we, we got it figured out. and So now, many technical difficulties. Oh, yeah. It, it's, yeah. So we so, have Abe. Hey, Abe. Hello. Can you hear me all right? We can hear you. You are on the air, and we're not touching anything. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Uh, hopefully, I, uh, hopefully, I don't lose you, and, and uh, we can we can get this report done on... Uh, I tried to dial in a few minutes ago, and and, and then it sounded like um, your other guest was going to be on. So uh, anyway, here we are, and there is good news. There's good news and there's bad news as usual. But first, greetings to everybody, and especially big shout out to um, to Ramiro Gonzalez, who is likely to be killed next Wednesday night. Um, hope you can hear us. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of people that are going to visit him over the next few days from uh, all over the country. Uh, Ali Sullivan with Death Penalty Action is going to be there. Britton Buchanan, uh, also um, an ally. Uh, uh, Shabazz is going to be there. I don't know if he's visiting, but uh, but he's going to be outside the prison. I imagine he will be there, Danny, with the Death Row Angels and, and all. Um, and hopefully... You know, maybe somehow there will be mercy for Ramiro. Uh, God willing, you know, if, if Governor Abbott can grant a commutation or a pardon or whatever it was to a white supremacist who was convicted of murder, uh, then, you know, there's probably no greater example of, um, of, of just taking responsibility for your actions and changing your life than Ramiro Gonzalez. And, and um, on Monday, you know, we'll find out what the recommendation is. But, you know, the power of the clemency materials that were put together for him was super powerful. And who knows? And then, of course, um, less than 24 hours later, at 10 a.m. Central Time in Oklahoma, Richard uh, Rojum, who actually prefers to go by the name Daiji, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, a Buddhist name, that he has taken um, is scheduled to be executed in Oklahoma. And that kind of puts back on track the uh, now every 90 days executions. Uh, so we're going to see what happens with him. Of course, Rosham uh, has always maintained his innocence. And, you know, his lawyers actually did a fair presentation of the questionable um, evidence in his case at his clemency hearing, which, you know, that's the weird thing about clemency hearings is, is they, they tend to not be about mercy, but they sort of uh, put the person back on trial again in an unfair situation. And anyway, he was denied a recommendation for clemency in Oklahoma. So that's, those executions are coming up this week. 
you know, um, but there's some other good things coming up this week. Uh, not other, uh, those are bad things. There are some good things coming up. I will tell you that just on uh, Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday, yes, on Tuesday, the House of Representatives in Delaware voted to remove the language allowing the death penalty from that state's uh, 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 statute, which is a big step towards eliminating it forever in Delaware. Um, the, the Delaware Supreme Court threw out the Delaware death penalty law, uh, and they had to change everybody on death row their sentences to life in prison. Um, and, and this is sort of a technical thing to clean up the language because they're not going to bring back the death penalty. And we're also working to get a bill passed that would begin the process for a constitutional prohibition in the first state, Delaware. Uh, so that we're going to see what happens over the next week. Uh, their legislature ends its session at midnight on June 30th, and we're, we have a really good feeling. I feel good about it. I can tell you, as a person who organized and worked to pass um, bills to, pa to repeal the death penalty in Delaware for a number of years, 2012, 13, 14, 15, I did a lot of work in Delaware. And what was amazing, when I listened to the roll call vote, in um, uh, um, on this past Tuesday was how many of the people that fought us and tried to keep the death penalty in Delaware 10 years ago now are voting to get rid of it forever. And, and now all that goes to show you is that people can change and they do change, even those who think that they have to be tough on crime and all that. So, so that's a spot of good news. Uh, you all heard... Um, at the opening of the show, if you were on the, uh, you know, Danny mentioned Carrie Max Cook. Um, you know, Carrie has been um, out of prison, off of death row for over 20 years, um, but fighting, fighting, fighting to prove his innocence. And as Danny mentioned, um, uh, on Wednesday, he woke up and found the order declaring his actual innocence from the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. And this is huge because Kerry went to trial four times, four times they tried to seek a death sentence. And finally he said he was offered the opportunity for a plea um, to be allowed to go on the time he had served, which was 20 years on death row and had some horrific experiences there. Um, and in any case, I want everybody to keep Kerry in, his, in your prayers because he learned about this while he was in the hospital. He had a stroke on Father's Day on Sunday last weekend, and uh, apparently was due for immediate, almost immediate surgery. He was supposed to have surgery yesterday. I haven't heard anything about the outcome of that, but it was you know, a life-threatening situation for him. Uh, but the good news for Kerry Max Cook is that he is now fully exonerated and can now seek compensation from the state, I hope, and, and all of that. So, so there's that. And then we had... Some unfortunate news, as Danny also mentioned just a few minutes ago with Melissa Lucio. Um, I mean, just another piece of, another BS move. Uh, I mean, just to make sure you're all clear, the judge who sentenced her to death and the prosecutor of Cameron County, together with the Innocence Project, all signed a motion saying her charges should be dismissed. And that's very, very clear. And instead of just accepting that and signing off on it, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals chose to send the case back down to the trial court for rulings on three other issues that were left untouched. Now, why would the judge leave them untouched? Because they're moot in the face of an order throwing out her conviction. So it's, you know, Melissa is going to continue to be patient. I've heard from her. We correspond regularly. Um, and, and Melissa, if you can hear me, you know, I did what you asked me to do. And we are here just praying that wisdom takes hold and they just let you out today. Uh, you should have been released years ago. And one day you're coming home. So there's that. Um, among other things that are happening and there's a lot happening. I want to mention uh, they're seeking an execution date for a guy named Robert Robertson in Texas, um, who would be the first person apparently executed under the shaken baby syndrome, um, and which is now shown to be junk science. And, um, and, and you know, so there's a lot of people clamoring about that. 
if you go to deathpenaltyaction.org and just you know, scroll down a little bit and you find the listing of the, the connection to the, you can, you can click on to take action and then there's execution petitions or you can just find the most current or the most imminent executions are always on the front page and then right under that it says here's the rest of them. And that's how you can see who else is on schedule. And you look at July 16th, Ruben Gutierrez in Texas, again, with an innocence claim and asking for DNA testing, and it's been denied and denied. So that's July 16th, July 18th in Alabama. Keith Gavin is scheduled to be executed. Doesn't look like anything's going to stop that. Arthur Burton in Texas on August 7th. Uh, Taber and Honey, if that happens, will be the first execution in Utah in over a decade. Uh, so we're watching that one closely. Travis Mullis has a date uh, September 24th in in Texas. And then Alan Miller will have a date. Uh, um, he is a person, one of those people that they tried to execute. He was on the execution table. They couldn't get a, an IV going. And they sent him back, cut and poked, and cut and poked back to his cell, and now they're going to try to execute him again using gas, gas suffocation, um, in, and that's in, in Alabama in September. And meanwhile, we're expecting other dates to be set in, um, in Alabama. They've got another guy, another gas execution that they've requested, uh, and then it's just a matter of time in states like Tennessee, South Carolina, um, uh, Idaho, uh, you know, um, and multiple other states that are just trying to get back into that game. So those are kind of the, 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 you know, the high points on the news. I do want to share a couple other good things that are happening, and I'll let you go. Uh, and that is um, on Monday, we're going to have some big news, uh, a big victory for our movement, and that's going to be breaking uh, starting about 10 a.m. Eastern time. So just watch for that. It's something that, that a lot of people have been paying attention to, and I can't, can't tell you yet, but I can tell you on Monday it's going to be big news, and we're very excited about it, um, and that's coming up. And then at the end of the week, uh, Friday night, a week from tonight, uh, I'll be out at the U.S. Supreme Court with dozens of others as we start the 31st annual Fast and Vigil to Abolish the Death Penalty, recognizing the anniversaries of June, um, June 29th, 1972, when the U.S. Supreme Court struck down all the death penalty laws in the country, made states that wanted to have a death penalty, write new laws, many of which did, of course, and the first of those laws were upheld on July 2nd, 1976. So for the 31st year, we're going to be doing a Starving for Justice, the annual fast and vigil to abolish the death penalty at the U.S. Supreme Court. We're on the sidewalk in front of the U.S. Supreme Court uh, with our information, our signs, and we're signing people up and people are signing petitions and all of that. And it's a high visibility action that every year adds more photographs that end up being used uh, to illustrate unrelated news items. Um, and it's just a powerful time when we all get to be together. I know Shabbos is planning to come up along with Roderick Reed and R.J. Reed, um, and uh, who else is coming from Texas? Uh, Julie Rinker and Melissa uh, Flaherty and John Flaherty from Dallas and um, and, and who knows, uh, there's probably some other folks from Texas that I'm, I'm not looking at that list yet that will be there. And then, of course, from around the country and people from other countries will all be there. It will be in solidarity with you. Um, and, you know, there's also you know, a lot of people, a lot of prisoners on death rows around the country have been fasting in solidarity. Dulia, uh, Dulia, um, oh gosh, um, her brother, Lewis, who just died a couple of weeks ago on Texas death row, has been a regular um, at the fast and vigil, and, and I know that a number of people had fasted in solidarity with us. You don't have to fast, but that's what we're doing. We're going to be shining a spotlight on the death penalty all of those four days, June 29th to July 2nd, and telling our stories uh, from people who are victim family members, death row family members, death row survivors, fellow activists, um, faith leaders, et cetera, et cetera. So those are all the things that are going on. And, um, and then, uh, David, I'll have to take a pass on, on uh, um, July 5th because that's my high school reunion party night. So 
um, so you can switch came around to next week, and I can do the report from, from uh, live from in front of the U.S. Supreme Court, or uh, you just let me know. But I'll check in with you on the Facebook, on the Messenger. Okay, any questions? Yes, we need, first, before I forget, we need your address. Of course. Uh, you can write to us at uh, Death Penalty Action, P.O. Box 89 in Ghent, G-H-E-N-T, New York 12075. I'll repeat it. P.O. Box 8989 in Ghent, G H E N T, New York 12075. That's where our main post office box is. I live in Columbus, Ohio, but that mail gets, gets sent over to me. And um, so that's how you reach us, as well, as well as you know, find everything on the webpage at deathpenaltyaction.org. And of course, we're on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram under that name as well, Death Penalty Action. Yeah, you're everywhere. Well, we That's try to fill the to... gaps and we try to try to keep showing up, and and we're grateful for everybody that also keeps showing up. Absolutely, absolutely. Hopefully, you will be going live while you're at uh, the Supreme Court steps. Yes, well, we'll we will. We're looking at the technology around that. To make the, the you know what we've been frustrated with is, is how uh, sometimes you, know, you go as we can see tonight you try to go live and something goes wrong and then you lose everything. So what I'm like, what we're exploring this year is if we record it and then post the recording um, that way we think there'll be better quality and, and but never don't don't worry we're going to be capturing every every word that's set out there and we've got some amazing speakers that are coming some people for the first time. Uh, we'll be telling their stories. Uh, among them, um, uh, Gina um, Grimm, whose father was one of the people executed in the Arkansas execution spree. Uh, she has never told her story publicly. She'll be she'll be speaking, um, and there's many others. It's all on the webpage there at uh, deathpenaltyaction.org. And if you can, if you can get to DC, come and join us. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and if you're there in Texas. If you're there in Texas, come over to Huntsville and stand outside the prison with us um, as we protest. I know that Danny will be there. Ali Sullivan is there from the Death Party Action Team and others uh, will be there. Um, and, you know, there should be bigger crowds outside that prison. So if you are listening and you can make it to Huntsville, you know, shoot to be there by 5 p.m. on on Wednesday and stand in, in vigil and opposition to that execution and every execution absolutely and thank you for saying that because we do need more people out there standing with us yes so we want to make sure that happens so any other questions no sir i think i think you pretty much summed everything up and we appreciate you being online or on air of course uh, on on air <laughs> Well, I, I hope the rest of the night goes smoothly, and I want to wish everybody a safe uh, evening, and uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you, Abe. Safe travels. Take care. Thank you. All right. You know, I hate it whenever that makes that beeping noise. I do, too. It hurts my ears. Aw. Oh. Aw. <laughs> we still got a couple of minutes. Did you say everything you want to say about the summit? I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I am too. Uh, Joy and I are going to be headed headed over there. I think it's a, it, it's an important um, event that TDCJ uh, offers, and just like the Sunset Commission, we have to take advantage of any opportunity to uh, let them know what's going on. Oh. Yeah, Marcy's on, but we've only got like two minutes. I think she wants to make a shout out. Okay. Oh, just do a shout out. Well, she's got two minutes, unless I forego the break song. I guess I can do that and give her seven minutes. Okay. Go ahead. Put Marcy on. Hey, Marcy. Hey, y'all. I appreciate you guys so much. I don't know what's going on. It's the oddest thing. I, or you may be out in the boonies. Well, I'm in Austin. Oh. Uh, I came to Austin for a, a grassroots leadership meeting and uh, learned a lot about voting rights. So, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to share 
and and don't let me take up too much of your time. And I apologize for whatever's happening with my phone or or whatever. But uh, I did find out that if you have been, uh, if you are on deferred adjudication, and that is if you were charged with a felony offense, you enter a guilty plea, and the judge sentences you to deferred adjudication, meaning you won't have a felony record after you complete that, you can vote. That does not count as a felony conviction in as far as voting goes, even if you are on paper with the deferred adjudication. <laughs> so I thought that was really huge. And the reason uh, being is it the, doesn't show up as a conviction unless you fail to live out your adjudication sentence. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Yes. So it may be a uh, so, kind of a technicality, but the truth is you can still vote. Yeah, definitely. And in Texas, if you have a felony conviction, as long as you are off paper, if you're you can't vote if you're on parole or probation or currently in prison on your felony conviction, but if you're off of those things, you can vote. So you guys make sure y'all are getting registered. Uh, I had a lot to share with y'all, and I know we just have a little bit of time. Uh, Linus has a lot going on with the lawsuit against TDCJ. Um, the second week in July, we'll be in court, uh, of course, uh, fighting for that case. We'll have an inside member offering testimony. Uh, she's been court-ordered to, to testify, and so and then we'll have an outside member testifying at that hearing. Uh, so we're we're working hard on getting everything together that the attorneys are asking to and fighting for our brothers and sisters still inside. Uh, we went to Philadelphia to the Clean Slate convening and learned about incremental change, right? Because they're passing legislation that may not pertain to most felonies, not mine. I have a first-degree felony, but... They were showing us how in Philadelphia they started with incremental change. So they passed legislation starting with misdemeanors and then now have advanced on to felonies. And so we're going to see how we can start working with them and organizing around that to get that ball rolling in Texas. <laughs> uh, I have some personal things. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry, that, I'm sorry about the time. Uh, just very, very quickly. I just got back from New York uh, for a prison TikTokers convention. <laughs> that was really, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we, there's just several of us that talk about our experience in prison and on TikTok. And uh, we have got together with uh, people from all areas of justice reform on a national level to figure out how we can organize and utilize storytelling to promote change. Uh, and I made some great connections there. Uh, TV shows coming along. Um, I'll be in L.A. next week staying at Rosie's house again and working towards that project. I'm excited. And then I have another show uh, that I'm not, I can't give too much information about, but that's, that's in the works and just a lot of wow. exciting things. You do. Yeah. You have a lot of exciting things going on. Yeah. I, I think that it's changing the narrative uh, of, of what someone looks like with a criminal background. I think that storytelling is so imperative to the movement. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited for all of that. And I encourage everyone inside uh, to keep writing down their thoughts, writing down uh, things that they want to share. Uh, let's let's get some op-eds published. Let's get some books written. Um, all of those important things. We have inside members sending articles out, and you know it's a shame they can't get paid in Texas for being a journalist inside. But you can still be a journalist. So if you're a writer and you're inside, y'all put your put your pen to paper, and uh, I'll, you know you can write me. I'll help you get published. I'll help you get it to the right people. And what's I want to your, give y'all my What's address. your address? Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm pulling that up right now because, sadly, I don't ever remember it. It's the Lioness P.O. Box. And just put my name on it. And it's P.O. Box 12051, 
Austin, Texas, 78711. And I'm Marcy Marie. And that letter will come straight to me. And, uh, yeah, send, send me if you want me to. If you want me to do a TikTok about something that you're seeing in prison that you see is wrong, you know, whatever ways I can help support you and, and get your story out, I absolutely will. Uh, people write me a lot for legal advice, and I don't have that. But I do, as the power of narrative, I can help you there. Well, we appreciate you being on tonight, Marcy. Hopefully next time it won't be so so difficult. <laughs> Yes, I don't know if it's a full moon or not. It was so strange. Uh, I had full service waiting and waiting, and then it just dropped the call and then dropped the call. It was so odd, but it's I Abbott. I think it's on. A, I think it's Abbott personally, but you know, <laughs> probably. <laughs> well, thank you, Marcy. Probably. Have a great weekend. Yes, much love to you all. Uh, good, good weekend to everybody and everybody on the inside. Keep your heads up. Sending big love inside. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Bye. Okay, David, did you want to play the... You're listening to KPFT Houston. Support for KPFT and the Prison Show is provided by the Cohen Parole Law Team. For almost 40 years, Gary Cohen has helped to represent incarcerated individuals throughout Texas, obtain parole, and fight parole revocations. We protect those who have fallen short of perfection from the wrath of those who believe they have attained it. More information about Gary Cohen and his associates, Alan Bennett and Gene Anthus, can be found on their website at parolelaw.com. You may also contact them at 512-476-6201. Okay, and now we are back. Remember, 713-526-5738. Option number two, to speak to your loved one on the air. And now we're going to head on up to line two, and Jeanette. Line two, and Jeanette. Hi, and Jeanette. Are you there, Ann Jeanette, or did we lose her? Hello? Oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, there you go. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. Um, I just wanted to call in really, really quick to send a birthday shout-out to Woody. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Oh, you. Hey, y'all have to put her on. She's not on the air. Okay. Hello. Hello? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that, Anjanette. <laughs> she interrupted Hello? your sing. Are you there? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> okay. okay. I got to start over. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to Woody. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to, to you. And many, many more. <laughs> that, yeah. Um, <laughs> that was I awesome. Love, yes, it's always awesome to sing "Happy Birthday." You know what? Today's my unbirthday. Like Alice in Wonderland. It's your unbirthday too, Danny. Oh, okay. <laughs> happy yeah. birthday if you, if you haven't seen the movie then you don't know okay, I have no oh. idea what you're talking about <laughs> oh. what's an unbirthday from Alice in Wonderland remember the Mad Hatter and the Rabbit oh yes now I remember no. having tea party uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I haven't thought it's about that today. I haven't thought about yeah. that in years it's one of my favorite movies I probably watch it once a week. Okay. Um, <laughs> my love. Home is whenever I'm with you. And I'm feeling so homesick right now. I'm missing you like crazy. And I love you. Un año, mi amor. Un año. Can you believe it? Thank, I thank God for you every day. I can't wait to hold you in my arms, in our dreams. 
because no one's going to love you like I love me. <laughs> Baby, I don't know what I'm saying. Where am I? I don't, I'm, I'm somewhere else. Somewhere just me and you dancing in the stars, looking at Mars, eating some candy bars. <laughs> no, baby, no, no. Um, will you come with me, my love? Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I love her, you. I love her, you, my baby, my beautiful, beautiful boy. All right, so shout out uh, to the guys. Woody. Hi, Woody. Hope you like my birthday song. <laughs> Blaine. Hi, Blaine. It was so nice seeing you the other day. Or was, I don't know, two weeks ago, something. Betito, hola, Mayo, Eric, Mark, Devo, and a very, very special shout out to the Fat Black crew on the Polenski unit. Much love and big, big hugs from Big Will. And I, you guys take care. God bless. You already know what it is. Hug life, his life. You guys have a good night. And there actually is, it, it's a full moon. I think it's like a cherry, a strawberry moon tonight. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm about that, to go take some pictures right now. That yep. makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> it makes <Yeah>. sense. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have a good night. Hopefully see you guys soon. I uh, hope to see you soon, too. Have a great weekend, girl. You, too. You, too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So a full moon, strawberry moon, that explains a lot. For today. All right, now we have Captain Tom on line one. Oh my goodness. Hello there, Danny and Cowboy Dave and Linda. Hello, everybody. Hello. I know it's been a while since I got on here, but um, I've been very, very busy. I've had uh, to get things together for the Veterans Appreciation Day here in Baytown, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and do my shout-outs. Uh, this is Arkansas, Juju, Leroy, John Armstrong, J.B. Anderson, Clarence Lee Bowman, Pete Sines, uh, George Johnson, John R. Green, Stephen Young, Paris Carmichael, uh, John Wayne, Mike Dean, Robert Brown, this is Terry Lee Lewis, Samuel V. Harris, Robert Harris, Jacob Farrell, Peter Torres, Thomas Mitchell, Robert Dunn, and let's see who else. Uh, Roger Jackson, Bobby Harper, and Bobby Joe Harper. And you can still donate to KPFT by going to kpft.org or call 713-526-5738. Or text the word GIVE to 713-526-5738. How are you, David? It's been a hectic night. I said it's a strawberry moon. I guess that explains everything. A strawberry full moon. Yeah, Don't you know about the strawberry full moon? All I know is we're having a rough time tonight <laughs> just putting on a show. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Internet's been down. Marlo was talking about... Uh, the normal internet company that we have has just dropped the ball just out of the blue, so we've got a temporary yeah, yeah. thing up underneath I, the I, desk. And... I know you can't uh, say who it is, though. Yep, I didn't. But... We just had that class, so I did not violate anything. <laughs> no, you did not. David. I did good. I did. Yeah. I did my homework. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I attended that class also. Yeah. So we had we had to behave ourselves. <laughs> so we have the temporary tower up underneath the table and i howard told me to use the passwords that were on it and they were about a mile long and they were there's two of them and they, neither one worked and then he sent me another one and said hey try this just out of the blue pulled something out of his hat mm -hmm. and it happened to work so well i'm glad y'all at least get get your show out because i was wondering about that well yeah. we were trying and, and then i broke the stand so now it's Sitting on the... <laughs> yeah, he did. He what did. do you call that thing? That's a, a music stand or something, right? The placard? Tripod. Tripod. You broke the tripod? I broke the tripod, yep. So I put it on that little placard that sits on the desk. It's just kind of leaning there. Uh, yeah, 
and he tells me, uh, don't move. Well, or, you know how, how people beat on the table and whatever? I said, please yes. don't do that. Just be still. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Yeah, that I didn't even have a bad. clip to hold it on there with. I just kind of propped it up and walked away. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. Hey, at I'm least we're on the air. Huh? At least we're on the air. So. At least you're on the air, yes. Yeah, so I'm very happy that yep. you guys are on the air. Uh, did you hear yep. the good news about the tablets? Yes, I did. Yep. So yep. we're looking yep. forward to that, and we'll talk to them next week, I guess, up in Austin. Yeah, but... I still like to get on the phone and do my shout outs. Yeah, we'll and still I'm... be having shout outs just like normal, except we'll have to. Yeah. We'll have to figure out how to, I mean, it's going to be like it was at the old place. They're going to be calling and calling and calling and calling, and they're just going to have to keep calling back unless yep, we come right. up with a different method. Yes. Like yep. blog, remember how we how David Babb did it? He had. He said he could get 60 callers in a queue, but I don't see how we could have 60 callers on the air. I don't see how we could do that either. We'll have to I figure really it don't. out. We have discussed oh. actually... We've discussed having multiple uh, locations for the second hour, but I don't know how that would work with the tablets. So, my, uh, that, you know how my little brain's—it's just over here, just to whining and got all the gears just to turn it. I'll figure it all out. Well, uh, I, I know how your temper is. <laughs> it's just, it's just <laughs> right well, that's why I broke the tripod. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. The tripod knows how my temper is. All right. Well, you guys be careful out there. And uh, as soon as I get my free time from this uh, Veterans Appreciation Day, that's why I have not been calling in because it's been blowing and going. We get all these uh, stuff together, and wow, it's just out uh, crazy. So tomorrow's the last day, so uh, that's a good thing. So I will call in next week and. We'll have a new list available, and uh, Danny and Linda, y'all be safe. You too. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, now Miss Shirley is on line four. Hey, Miss Shirley. I've got Caitlin ready over here. I was talking about the sun. My phone was messing up a while ago, so that may be what it is. You there? Yes, we are here, oh, okay. and you are on the air. Yeah, my phone keeps freezing up. Oh, no. So I'm calling to do a shout-out to uh, Blaine. Hey, Blaine, I hope you like your movie. Uh, if you got to watch it, I hope you like it. <clears throat> uh, I hope you have sweet dreams tonight. I'm not going to be on here very long. My voice seems like it's leaving me. So I do a shout out to everybody, um, Big Will, Mark, Eric, Mayo, Fredo, and Mr. Rodrigo. <laughs> all, of y'all, all of y'all have a good night and sweet dreams and the same to y'all. Same to you, Miss Shirley. Thank y'all. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye-bye. Okay, now we have Caitlin. This is a shout out for Bethel, Garza, and Polanski. Hey, boo, how are you? I hope that you're in good health, spirits, staying safe, and that there's a smile on your handsome face. As for me, everything is okay. I am off work today, and I just had a complete lazy day. Yeah, I did nothing. I just kind of had a day. I'm watching TV and snuggling Daytona. Um... I'm going to go up to Buddy up maybe Monday. No, two. It will be two. No, Sunday. Yeah, I'm going to go up to Buddy on Sunday. Yeah, because I'm kind of working kind of flat out. I'm back in work tomorrow and then Saturday into Sunday and Monday. So, yeah, after work on Sunday, I will go up to him. But today I was like, yeah, I'm going to have a lazy, lazy, lazy day. Um, The weather here, yeah, you guessed it. It is raining. Yeah, we... um. Yeah, other than that, everything is good. Um, please know that you mean the world to me and that I'm sending you big, big hugs. So good night, sweet dreams, and stay safe. And to everybody at the prison show, a big, big thank you for making this happen. 
All right. Thank you, Caitlin. All right. Now we have Rosie on line three. Hi, Rosie. Thank you for what y'all do. We, you know, y'all very much appreciate it. Uh, my shout out goes to my fiance, Memo Favela Jr., over in Wainwright Unit. Babe, I love you and I miss you so very much. Um, I can't wait to see you, come visit you soon. Uh, God bless, stay strong. Mi rey, mi chulo. Lots of hugs and kisses. I'm so happy y'all are off lockdown. The phones are back up. I missed your voice. I missed your love. Um, just lots of hugs and kisses and, uh, always, always waiting for your phone call. And I'm glad that the calls have gotten a whole lot better. Um, you're forever your rose. So good night, babe. Uh, everything's good. And, uh, yes, I stayed up. And I can give you a shout out. All right, baby. Love you. Hugs and kisses. Thanks, Prison Show. Appreciate everything y'all do. Y'all have a blessed weekend. You too, Rosie. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, Bye-bye babe. Bye. Okay, so now we have Mike. Oh, it's mysterious, Mike. Ugh. Hello, this is Mysterious Mike doing the shout-outs for the prison show tonight. Uh, here comes my shout-outs, the guys of Texas, Guy Alexander, Jamie Cuppett, Stephen Russell, Stephen McGee. Uh, Lucy and Michelle want me to do a shout-out for Paul. Shout-out for uh, Philip Perez. Shout-out for Matt, Thomas, Edward Rees, Edward Ruiz, Adam Wilkerson. Shout-out for Curtis Robertson, Blaine Milam. Shout-out for Haas. Uh, Tasha wants me to do a shout-out for Payday. Shout-out for Aaron Vasquez. Shout-out for uh, Keith Money. Shout-out for uh, Bill R. Sims. Special shout-out to Clarence Lee Bowman. Shout-out to Raymond Lee Cart. And you can continue to write to Mysterious Mike in care of David Collingsworth. And I hope everybody has enjoyed the summer solstice. Yesterday was the first day of summer. And tonight is the strawberry moon. Go take a look at the uh, summer solstice strawberry moon. And now back to the prison show. All right. And we have Lydia. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Donnie. How are you? Doing good. What about you? <laughs> we're doing good. We're, we're doing good here. Uh, I was just looking at the moon. Um, that he just said it was a strawberry something. Strawberry something moon. moon. Whatever that is, I don't know any much about it, but I'll read about it. But looks like uh, maybe we might get a little bit of rain, but we've already uh, got some, not much, 3.18. That's what my sister's um, water thingy said, her gauge. Yeah. But at least we got some rain. And I just want to give a shout out to my son, just tell him that, uh, we're good. All of us are good. Um, Theo Jr. went out somewhere. He was dressed for a change. He was like, um, I guess he was going out. And he had some nice cologne on because it, it, really, it was really nice. He, he looked good. And I have a feeling he had a date, maybe. I also have a... Uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't ask him. But um, we're good, mijo. It's the... I spoke to Amanda this afternoon. She was home already with the kids. And um, Jessica is somewhere. I don't know where she's at. Edward is still in Europe. I think he was in Germany. And, uh, well, he was going to be over there three weeks. That's what the early said yesterday. But um, we're all good here. I have a party tomorrow uh, over at Sylvia's, mijo. At Sylvia Garza's. Uh, Eric is having a, his wife is having a baby shower. So it's co-ed, a co-ed baby shower. 
and we're supposed to go tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, everything is co-ed nowadays. Yeah, my wife invited me to one of those co-ed baby showers, and I told her that that's not right. Something's wrong with that picture. (laughs) Well, let me tell you, my my husband has more fun than I do at those parties, okay? They said that all the men had pacifiers and stuff. I'm not, yeah, I don't (laughs) think so. It better it better say Budweiser on it or something, you know. <laughs> okay, well, I, I, we we have fun, but uh, that's about what we're doing tomorrow, and uh, that's all, Mijo. Is to give me a buzz tomorrow, God willing. Okay, love you and miss you, and you take care and saludos to all the guys. Okay, you all take care. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, Lydia. Have a well, great weekend. You too, Danny. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Okay, now we have Stacy. This is to my husband's sporty black at Wainwright unit. Hey, baby love, this is your wife kissing you. I tuck you in. Hopefully we got our whispers late today. I see on WRFB they said the tablets have a new look when they loaded up this morning. Ooh, I finally got the missing Eno. Yeah, the 624, no, the 6 second uh, at 841. Yeah, the second part of the article we've been waiting on. So I should have all four parts. I'll work on this evening or tomorrow. I've also touched base with Hillier. She got the email with post, post the two posts, but hasn't replied. So, uh, yeah, also I sent um, the set B, the article, and the response we got from her was she'll be out of the office until 623rd and she'll get back. Yeah, so we'll probably have to resend that to her. Um, I see New York State viola- violated solitary confinement rule, the judge said. Yeah, that's a post we put on today. Yeah, boo, a bit of updates. Um, oh, yeah. The Reform Alliance group you asked about, Sean W. Maybe the group has ties to Meek Mill. Who is the co-chair? Yeah. Baby, the girls behave and they're doing the best they can to stay cool. Uh, Mama's well. Baby, this is kissing you our truth. We are eternally and real. Stay hydrated and healthy. Mwah. Love you, my husband. Mwah. Take care, sweetheart. Mwah. Okay. And now we have Gloria. Hey, Gloria. Hey, how y'all doing? We're making it. How about you? Well, same here. Just busy as I can be. Um, I want to give some shout-outs. My, whoops, where are my notes here? Well, let me uh, give a shout-out to T. I was glad to hear from you. Um, hated to hear the news you gave me, but ugh. anyway, hope to see you soon. Spider, uh, didn't talk to you today, so I just wanted to say hello. Big White, I hear, uh, Ken Paxton is up to no good, so you know I'm not religious, so I'm not going to tell you I'm praying for you, but I might just pray that Paxton as a car wreck or something, I don't know. Um, <laughs> to Anthony Pierce, I got your, uh, me- at the Ramsey, I got your message. Um, so just know that I, right now I'm broke, but by next Friday I should have some money and I will do the e thing for you, except... But I don't understand what two O A K Oak Meal Oak Meals are. So let me know what that means. Um, and uh, Nanan Williams at the Ramsey. Actually, I have a message for Sergeant Harris at the Ramsey. And if somebody at the Ramsey is listening, tell that woman to turn on her radio because lady if you think you're going to order your guards to get four right up four cases a day 
this is a case quota. And maybe you don't remember, but uh, the last person that did a case quota got into some deep problems. So uh, you can just stop that right now. Um, in 2018, maybe you don't remember Sergeant, uh, whatever your name is, uh, but in 2018, when there was a case quote at the Ramsey, this was uncovered. Uh, Captain Gilbert got demoted. The warden got demoted. People were fired. And that's going to, is what is going to happen to you uh, if you don't stop this and stop harassing people about having prayer rugs when they have permission to have them. That is a harassment. And we are going to be talking to uh, Mauricia Jackson, who's the Region 3 director, as well as calling uh, the warden over there, Ramsey. And then at the, uh, what's that summit called, Danny? Next, on um, the 29th? Yeah, next Saturday. It, it's just a TDCJ summit. Well, let me tell you, um, people at that summit are going to know about your four cases a day for each of your COs. So stop it now. Um, and Nanan, um, I didn't realize you didn't know about Big Lou, but TDC killed him when he had a heart attack and they left him lying on the floor of his cell for two days. The funeral was beautiful. Uh, the burial was very nice. He's buried in between his mom and dad in Austin. And um, tell me this sergeant woman's name, first name, uh, so that I can make sure I have it to give to everybody I talk to at this summit in Austin that's coming up. Um, I... I guess that's it. But, you know, you officers that are, are telling your COs to write cases, you need to stop that. You can't have quotas. You can't tell them write four cases a day unless you want to get fired or arrested or lose your job because that's that's what happens. Um, when this happened in 2018 at the Ramsey unit, um, a lot of people lost their jobs. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, well, I know the warden was demoted and transferred somewhere else. Um, yes. And it, it, was, it was interesting because even John Whitmire, he usually doesn't give a damn about People, when he was head of the Criminal Justice Committee, he was very upset about this. Now, he's no longer um, in the Senate, but we will be contacting every minute, every person who is on the Senate's Criminal Justice Committee and the House's Criminal Jurisprudence Committee and uh, let them know what's going on with these quotas of four cases a day. So... Just warning you, Miss Thing. Okay, that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Gloria. And I'm telling you, oh, you know, I didn't hear what Abe said about uh, uh, Carrie Max Cook having surgeries. Do you remember? He, I know that he, he had, had a stroke. Yeah, he had a stroke. I'm not sure about surgeries. Oh, I thought maybe I misunderstood. I My dog was acting weird and I wasn't paying attention. I thought he said Carrie was still in the hospital. I think he is, but I think that's from the stroke. Oh, okay. Because I saw a message on Facebook that he was in the hospital Father's Day weekend. Well, I guess that was just last weekend, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he's still in the hospital. Bless his heart. I hope he recovers and lives a long life after fighting for 40 years and telling people he was innocent and they tried him and tried him and retried him so many times to where 
he finally copped the police so he could get out. He just, you know, he didn't want to go back to death row. And then after he took this plea deal that gave him his freedom, a couple of days later, they all of a sudden found underwear in the coat of the woman that they had accused him of killing uh, that had semen on it, and it wasn't Carrie's. But I'm glad that that uh, the CCA finally did something good and said he was innocent. That's that's awesome. So I'll let y'all go, and I'll well, I'll see you. Well, I hope not, but I will may see you Wednesday in Huntsville. I guess we'll see what the board does. Uh, they're supposed to give a decision. I don't know what time, but on Monday I heard. Well, and he still has some things pending, so. Oh, he does? Yes. Oh, thank heavens. I hope something works. Oh, and Ramiro, I'm sorry. I totally forgot. Um, I found the music you liked <laughs> that I had never heard of, and I've got a friend who's explaining to me how to hook it up to our sound system. Hopefully... We won't be going to Huntsville Wednesday, but if we do, we will be playing your music for you, and maybe you'll be able to hear it. But hopefully nothing's going to happen Wednesday. So you take care, and I understand you're going to visit uh, Ali tomorrow. So I hope you have a great visit. Okay, Danny, I'll let you all get on with your business. All right. Thank you, Gloria. Have a great weekend. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, now we have Cindy on line one. Hello? Hi, Cindy. Hi. I was just calling to give everyone a shout-out that doesn't have anyone calling in and to tell David Collingsworth that he's great. Everything that he does, good man. Oh, well, now you're going to Flattery will get you everywhere. I know. I was about to say, <laughs> his head's swelling. For... Yeah, my hat don't fit anymore. <laughs> his head is getting very big. <laughs> this shout goes to whoever is not getting a shout. You're loved. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Keep your faith and keep your heads up. Thanks, Cindy. We miss you. I love you. Love Talk you, too. To you later. All right. Bye, Bye. sister. So for those of y'all that don't remember Cindy, Cindy was here for a long time. She answered phones and took care of Dewey and did all kinds of stuff, part of the prison show gang. Well, she sounds like from uh, your text message that she cut Dewey's hair. That And it helped, helped him get in the bathroom and bathe and all kinds of stuff. She was really good friends with Dewey. Well, thank you, Cindy. You need to call back more often. All right, Freddie. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Linda. I want to apologize to my boys behind the gated community. Uh, I'm sorry for not calling. I've been a little sick, uh, but I'm doing good now. What's up, David? Uh, all you guys, uh, life is good, man. It's getting better and better. I didn't realize that being single was so good. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I'm happy. I'm content. Friday before uh, I was able to do a shout out, man, uh, my security lights didn't come on, and I went to the position line to the window, opened the position line, man, and I ran into it with my eyeball, my right eyeball. Oh my god! Oh, I had so much pain. So I wasn't able to shout out nobody, but man, I just laid up and hollered like a little girl. <laughs> anyway, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good now, and uh, let me shout out my boy. My brother, uh, James Dudley, and really everybody, everybody that's behind the gated community, man. I love y'all, and keep your head up, and I know it's difficult, man, but uh, somebody told me, man, that uh, a brother of mine that I love very much said, uh, just do the right thing, man, and think things over, and hey, it's been working wonders in my life. I'm sober. I'm healthy now, and uh, sucker-free. Filing for divorce pretty soon, and uh, what can I say? I just came back, came home from a concert, church concert, so that was a great blessing. And uh, I'm just keep pushing on, man. I got three, three plus years out already, 
All my parole fees are caught up. Everything's caught up. So, man, God has been good to me. And for all you guys that have been praying for me, man, which I know you all have, uh, especially my brother Dudley and David, hey, thank you all, man. appreciate it. Love you all. And uh, just keep on going forward, brothers. Well, Save it up for my Harley. <laughs> 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 yes. My girl's waiting outside for me. Uh, man, I'm gonna get one pretty soon. I'm gonna take my truck down there one of these days so you can see it. Yeah, I saw the pictures. It's a nice truck. Man, it is sweet. Runs like a Cadillac, bro. Yeah, there's a one country owner, western song that talks about a truck. It doesn't matter if you burn it up or not. You still, it's still the best vehicle you got. Oh yes, it is, man. <laughs> it's, it's man, it's very good truck. I love it. Can't can't anyway, get no better than a Toyota. No, you can't. You can't. Sure can't, especially, well, I mean, yeah, you can with a Harley Davidson. Well, I'm talking about a truck, though. I seen well, that'll a, be a truck. That'll be I a seen car, a Ford the other day that had Harley Davidson written on it. I'm like, man, that don't look like a Harley to me. I saw a truck the other day, uh, especially a friend of mine, DJ in San Antonio, Johnny Ramirez. He's got a Harley Davidson truck. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's just decorated with Harley Davidson stuff. It's not an actual Harley Davidson. I believe you. I, I trust you more than I trust anybody else. Yeah, it was a Ford. Ford did that, and then they went to, they called it a Lightning or something. I mean, they just changed them up just to give it a different package. Yeah, yeah. Extra accessories. It still don't sound like my Harley does. <laughs> oh, of course not. Of course not. Well, I'm going I'm to give me one, too. Well, yeah. Mark my words. I'm going to give me one. We're going to ride. I, I was looking at another one today. I, I might get me another one. And there's some out there on well, Facebook Marketplace that are pretty reasonable low mileage people just don't ride them they sit up in the garage and they don't know what to do with them yeah well once they ride them they don't want to ride them yeah hey, bring them over to my house i'll show you how to ride yeah i'm, I'm gonna have to learn how to ride. I, I know how to ride but i'm gonna have to get used to sitting down down on a horse i, I got over i got <laughs> almost fifteen thousand miles on my new bike already already Ooh. <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's what it's for is to ride Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got one alive. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. That's what I want to do. I'm going to buy me a dress. I'm going to buy me something sweet. Yeah. I don't care how much I got to pay for it. Well, you seen my new one, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, that's pretty bike. Pretty bike. Yes, yes, yes. Well, it's good hearing from you. I'm I'm glad you're doing better. Man, much, much better. Uh, I'm not heartbroken at all. How can I be if somebody don't love me? I ain't going to waste a minute or second of my time with somebody like that. <laughs> yeah. How's Junior? Yes, sir. Junior is still struggling, quitting jobs, and expecting to be supported by family members. And he got kicked out of my daughter's house, at his daughter's house. Hmm. He don't, he wanted to stay up all night like a teenager and talk on the phone and not work. But I thought he was working and making lots of money. He was, and he, all of a sudden he had already he was working for Formosa in uh, Point Comfort for a whole year, and all of a sudden he just quit. Hmm. And now, right now, he got two jobs, but uh, living in a motel. He wants to live in a motel. You can't afford living in a motel, man. Yeah, you might as well live in a mansion, living in a motel. Golly, do you pay the whole mortgage to the damn thing? <laughs> man. Yeah. You know, I, I I work my butt off, but I save my pennies, man. I'm paying four hundred dollars a month in a gig. Thank God for that, because I ain't gonna pay no more than that. Yeah. And this yeah. sweet little, I got a sweet little place. Yeah, well, I got a big old place. It cost me a lot more than four hundred dollars. So, all right, Freddie, oh, yeah. we got a couple other callers on the line, so we're going to get moving okay. on. Have all a good right. night, Love brother. You guys. Love you guys behind the walls. Y'all be good, man. Yes, bye -bye. sir. Bye bye. Oh, all yeah. right. Now we have Carmela on line one. Carmela on line one. I guess there's a, hang on, Carmela, we're coming. Why is four on there? Because that's what that's the call he was on. Four? Freddie was on, yeah. Oh, what, what happened to three then? Yeah, we can hear everything. Y'all, there we go, Carmela. Hey, Carmela. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Linda for recognizing me and correcting me. I'd like to uh, shout out to my 
nephew Bradley Leland Aiken as the Beto unit. Uh, I hope you're staying cool and drinking plenty of water. I know it's so hot. It's hot out here. I can imagine how hot it is there. Um, I can hardly stand being in the garage to do uh, laundry for my family, but just stay cool, whatever you can do, and keep your head up and just keep your feet going forward and don't let the devil get into your mind. Um, I hope you're doing okay, and I love you. I want to let you know that you are loved and not forgotten. Uh, my next shout-out is uh, uh, Roger Alexis Andrews. Uh, I think he's still at the Bell County Jail. Um, he's going to be transferred sometime to Houston. So, um, Rebel, it was so good to hear your voice when you called Father David the other night. Uh, you sound like you're doing good and in a good place, and I'm glad that things are looking up for you. Just keep on keeping on. Um, and just know that you're loved and not forgotten. Um, stay cool if you can. And my third shout-out is to Marcus Mullins at the Holiday Unit. Um, same thing for you, Marcus. I hope you're staying cool and safe and things are progressing positively for you. Um, to Alexis and... Uh, I'm sorry, Roger and Marcus, Father David and family are going on vacation this uh, Sunday. So I'm going to hold the fort down for them. <laughs> so can't be being lazy. Take care of the dogs and the chickens and um, Max, the guinea pig. So and my lunatic kitty. So. I hope you guys are doing good, and um, t- tonight is a strawberry moon, so get a chance to peek out a window. Uh, it should be interesting. I've never seen one, but, but they say it's nice. Uh, just take care and stay cool, and just know you guys are loved, and everybody on the inside, male and female, uh, just know your thought about your your love by God and other people that think about you and just have a great weekend and be safe. Thanks to Christmas show for taking my call. You guys traveling grace on the way home and please stay cool. Good night. Good night, Carmela. Have a great weekend. Likewise. Thank you. All right, now we have Manuela on line three. Hi, Manuela. Hi, dear. How you doing? Doing good. This is fine to hear. And I will make my shout out to my husband, Robert Robertson. Polanski unit. Hey, baby, how you done? I do hope and pray that you feel feel all right. The circumstances are not good, but I want you to know that, that I stand by you, by your side, always and forever, baby, no matter what happens, and I love you. With all my heart, baby, I'm thinking of you every every single minute of the days. I'm dreaming of you. My heart goes to you every time. And my heart is only you. Yours, I love you, baby. Well, I'm all right so far, you know. And I miss you so much. And I wish I, that I could be there with you. Many, many greetings from um, Stefan. Baby, I want you to know that I try to stay strong. 
And I want to ask you to stay strong too. We must stay strong together, baby. And we will going to make it. I'm there for you always. If you need something, let me know. I will try to fill your wishes, baby. My love, please never give up. And I will never give up. Never give up on you, our dreams, goals, plans, and prayers. Especially, I don't give up on you. I will be there for you. And I will try to see you soon, baby. I love you. I miss you. I need you. And I want you. And you are my only one for the rest of my life. Please stay strong, baby. Good night. Okay. We love you, Manuela. All right, Clarence. Hi, Clarence. All right, how y'all doing tonight? Doing good. How about I'm, you? I was calling to say hello to the fellas. Let them know what I'm doing already. Got me a little part-time job now. Because Social Security ain't paying nothing. But I also need to tell Mysterious Mike, if it's any way possible, or him or the count, would you please try to call me around by Tuesday or Wednesday? Morning or evening, whatever time you can, I'll be at home. And uh, I need to talk some important business with us. All them people on Velasquez, Mark Stiles, and all them units over there, y'all take care of this old man. May the Lord bless each and every one of you. And I think that'll do it for me tonight. I forgot to go back to work. I'm hiding in the closet, trying to make this call. All right. Hello? Thank you, Clarence. <laughs> All right. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. All right, Linda, do you want to make your shout-outs? Sure. I'll try to go fast. I know we're running out of time. Joel White, Mark Moore, Moriers, Thomas Miller L., Paul DeVoe, William Owen Sr., Jaime Cole, Franklin Davis, Will Spear, Cedric Marks, Robert Satterfield, Robert Solis, Lucky Ward, Ronald Haskell, William Hudson, Juan Balderas, Blaine Milam, Paul Story, Walter Shorto, Robert Roberson, Britt Ripkowski, Charles Hill, Dwayne Buck, Tyrone Williams, Iron Thunderhorse, Curtis Robertson, Stephen Curry, Eugene Broxton, Marcus Drury, Troy Glover, Bill Sims, Paper Cup at Estelle Unit, Midget Titan at the Estelle Unit, Gregory Allen at the Die Ball Unit, and Jedediah Reed at the Luther Unit. You guys have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Okay, and I'm going to do my shout-outs. First and foremost, to my one of my very best friends, Farron Wardrop over at Polanski. Hey, it was great seeing you. Had a great visit with you. You didn't annoy me, not one time. Can you believe that? All right, and Rodrigo. I have to call you that because, you know, it's catchy. <laughs> Brett, uh, Eugene Broxton, I'm keeping an eye out for you and your wonderful wife. Uh, Michael Ferguson, eh, call back, sorry about that. My life has been so hectic lately. Driver, T, T, I sent you something. Check your e-messages. Big Head, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, King Big Head, King Big Head, of course, Blaine, hey Blaine, I sent you something too, Mayo, Leroy, Larry at the Huntsville unit, Jay at the Wynn unit, uh, Toot, Leo Willis, and Joe Dawn, along with Chucky at the Wynn unit, and a huge uh, hey to Rex Alicious and CJ. Of course, CJ wanted to give a huge shout out to Midget Titan over at the Estelle unit and Paper Cup. Yes, Paper Cup and Midget Titan. And Kenneth Decker 
and Joel White. Great big hellos to you both. Hellos. And that's all I have. All my shout outs. I know we've had a crazy show tonight. Crazy show. But it's not quite over either. No, it isn't. <laughs> I know. I'm looking at my... It could still be crazy. Wild and crazy. I don't need any more of that, <laughs> David. <laughs> I'm tired. Let me you, tell you. you I keep am... moving around in there. You might get <laughs> get some more. That thing over there fall right over. Oh, I know. I need to quit moving. But... Facebook Live would be looking at the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or not. Maybe. Yeah, maybe... there's a poster over on the wall that might get a good view of. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yep. Of course, I had to look at the fo- the poster. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm looking, I'm looking. We, or actually, I think it was the Polensky unit that posted this. And um, believe it or not, uh, TDCJ, I think I m- may have mentioned it last week, but um, TDCJ has uh, Facebook groups for some of their units, not all, but it's TDCJ dash, and for the Polensky unit, it's Allen B. Polensky unit. And other units, of course, would be whatever Styles unit or Ellis unit. Ellis unit. Well, it's the mighty OB Well Ellis <laughs> or something like that. Uh, anyway, um, they are some of the units are now, and the, it's my understanding they're run by the staff at the unit. Um, what staff? I have no idea. But um, anyway, they're liking a lot of our posts, uh, the prison shows posts. Now, keep in mind what we post is uh, prison related. Uh, everything prison related anytime that we see someone you know i don't know we're not i I was fixing to say something but it's like i caught myself before it's like whoop suck that verbiage back in there but we try to post um everything every yes everything everything uh, if you guys graduate a class or if you get baptized or um, all the different religions. Um, we, we 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 don't just we don't discriminate. No, not if at you all. guys are doing a great job. We want to give you a thumbs up. And let everybody know you're doing a great job. Absolutely. Even when you're not doing a great job, mm, like with the the people that just um, got busted with got the K two and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. What unit was that at? Yeah, it was just on the TDCJ. Yeah, they uh, did. Instagram page. Oh, it says. Um, uh, the TDCJ uh, Fusion Center. I don't. I don't even know what. Yeah, local law enforcement and the yeah. officer inspector general. They all found. I mean, yeah. these dudes. They had pictures of the people. I'm yeah. not going to put them out there on blast, but. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. This is why we have like Linda and I have to get searched by dogs when we go <laughs> because of people like this and they've been doing that for years though i mean my mom and my mom went to visit me and i was on the bird unit and you could see the parking lot and as soon as my mom went inside they searched not only my mom's car but they searched the trash can right out there by where my mom's car was at i yeah, mean it's just yeah but they and we've been visiting for years it's l- lately that since this k2 stuff has come out that they started really i mean it's every unit everyone i i go for visitation at that they have the dog maybe it's me i don't know (laughs) maybe you smell like k2 i I hope not yeah but these folks not only had k2 but they had snuff and cigarettes, cigarettes vape pens and beef jerky and beef jerky. Beef jerky, yeah. They had well, that's four random. beef jerky sticks. <laughs> yeah. They had beef jerky. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, maybe somebody was jonesing for some beef jerky. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. That's funny. Man, <laughs> man, I really need some beef jerky. Just throw it over the fence. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's very random. Very random. <laughs> I don't know. I knew a guy one time. I, 
and he would get hair dye. He was so he didn't want anybody to see his <laughs> uh, sideburns were getting silver, so he would get hair dye smuggled in. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, and I told him, I said, you know, you're taking such a big risk because if they find that hair dye, they're not going to believe you're dyeing your sideburns. They're going to think you're going to dye your clothes to escape or something. You shouldn't be doing absolutely. that stuff. That's 15 flat, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> For some vanity. Vanity, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty serious stuff. 15 and, flat. And what idiot was doing that for him? Well, evidently one of his loved ones. Uh, yeah, apparently. Yeah, and uh, hey, y'all, don't put your loved ones at risk like that. Come on now. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that that's bad. That's bad, especially the the moms and the the wives, the mothers, the mothers of your uh, children. Yeah, that's not cool. So yep. you, you got anything else, David? Hmm. Well, I just no, not really. I mean, y'all keep your heads up and try and stay cool as you can. Yes. I mean, it's it's really hot, and they said tomorrow's going to go up into triple digits. So, yeah. yeah y'all remember to send us in, if you want us to talk about something next weekend. Yeah. Make sure you send everybody. Let us know what to take. Are you going to send it to your Securus account? Yeah. Yeah, they can write us over at 226 Chipmunk Trail, Shepherd America. Shepherd America, yes. I forgot about I forgot about Shepherd America. Yeah, I've got uh, I I shouldn't say it, but I got two letters at the on the visor of the truck. Really, David? Yeah, I'm really? on the bike. I mean, I think about it and I'm about halfway here and it's like, man, I left them on the visor of the truck. So now y'all know when we don't answer. <laughs> And one of them's addressed to me, but I think the other one might have Linda's name on it. Uh, they all have Linda's. <laughs> Give them to Linda. <laughs> Look, we're fixing to get out of here, but I want you guys to know that the Houstonian's fixing to be in the house. Um, Mr. Rico himself is going to come and be jamming. So y'all stay tuned. Um, man, it, it, it's been a good show, even though we did have some technical difficulties. We got a lot of information in a short amount of time. So we appreciate you guys tuning in. And i I like to hit up one more time and let you guys know that we have been working really diligently on the tablets. And we did get good news from Securus. Um, they said it would be at least two months from what was that? Was that two weeks ago? So we're looking at about a month and a half to two and a half months. But we're... We're 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 coming, guys. We're coming. So you just keep passing them radios around, keep rattling the bars, and hollering down the pipe chase, and uh, pretty soon we'll be on everybody's tablets. So that'll be pretty cool. But in the meantime, we're going to go out with Charlie and the Regrets. You guys have a good weekend, and if you can see that strawberry moon, uh, get out there and know that your loved ones can see it too. Have a great weekend.
Pacifica National Board and the KPFT Local Station Board will be voting on a proposed Pacifica Bylaws Amendment between July 10th and August 24th of 2024. Information on the amendment about how vacancies are filled on the Local Station Board and about the process will be posted on the Pacifica.org website.